going straight to the business of the day. Donald Trump goes out and down. White House now beckons on, Be on Biden as a 77-year-old mounts the saddle as the 46th president of the United States of America. That's the verdict of the American people after a hard-fought election that saw Biden uh, climbing to the throne. We'll continue with this uh, discussion after this break. Stay with us. This is Liberty Democracy in Practice. This is Liberty Democracy in Practice. Hey, welcome back. Democracy in Practice, reaching you from Abuja on Liberty Television. Before we took that break, we, just, we told you that Biden uh, is preparing to mount a saddle as the 46th president of the United States of America. That's the verdict of Americans after a hard-fought election that saw an unprecedented wave of issues, some domestic to the United States, but also of relevance to the world. Now, these issues are brought out several other issues leading to a very big issue around the United States at the moment. Um, and that's the issue we'll be engaging. Um, the bastion of democracy, uh, seemingly uh, caught up in a web of crisis. Uh, we've also heard that uh, uh, the, there's a litigation process uh, going on uh, at the moment. Uh, so the world awaits what becomes of the bastion of democracy uh, in the context of democracy. And also some of the security issues that drive uh, the entire globe and with the U U.S. also playing a very key role in ensuring global st stability and also a democracy across the world. I'm joined in the studio by an international uh, terrorism and counterintelligence uh, consultant, Dr. Uh, Ngokolo, Amechi Ngokolo, who, is, who will be looking at some of the issues, especially from uh, the point of view of uh, stability in the world, security across uh, the globe. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Nice to ha thank you for having me. In the course of this uh, discussion, we'll also be joined by uh, a U.S.-based uh, journalist who will be filling us in on what's going on in, in the United States at the moment, at the aftermath of the election, um, uh, with everybody digging in as to and holding on to one position or the other. Ben Epeyo will be joining us from the United States in the course of this discussion via the phone. In the meantime, Dr. Mokolo, yes. you've been following the trend in the United States. What's your reading of what's going on there? Well, anyway, uh, what I'll tell first of all, I'm disturbed and a bit uh, ashamed of uh, the development in terms of all that we are hearing, all that we're for the world a greatest democracy, um, uh, for them to be having the kind of sham they, they are portraying to the whole world now. Uh, will they later on be able to tell anybody or tell any country that they should democratize or the tenets of democracy should be in practice when we are hearing all the failures and rigging and all that uh, miscalculation? I think uh, with the trend that 
we saw, whichever party, or, and I'm not support of anybody, um, America, whichever party that is there, is still the interest of the American state that they fight for. But uh, they've uh, sowed a kind of seed, especially in the African context, for the African government, where we are still grappling and trying to, you know, uh, model democracy here. Yeah? The tenets of elections, uh, it's a problem, a great issue in Africa. Uh, I think people are going to be pointing out that, well, this is what happened in America, so don't tell us, mm. even if we rig here. And we mm. know that rigging is part of our electoral practice here in Africa. The president can decide to stay for the next 30, 40 years, even in democratic, in so-called democratic uh, government in Africa. You see government. So that brings some kind of, um, for me, trouble in my mind that who is going to now police mm. the world again? Does the world really need a policeman? Well, they, if they we're talking democracy, uh, the, if we talk about, you need to show a, a shining example where people can copy from that. Yes, we do this. I would say, well, in, in some civilized Europe, just like I was telling before we started, mm. countries in Europe uh, take countries like Switzerland, uh, broken democracy, very good voting. Group. They will have one of the best in the world. They take countries like uh, Denmark and um, Norway and Sweden and and the rest of them. America came out and told the world that we have the best democracy, the largest democracy um, in terms of uh, practice, because I think India is the largest in mm. terms of number. Mm. But what they've done now, or what we see emanating is a sham uh, to the whole world. Do you see this resonating across the world? Yes, it's going to, especially in Africa. It might not in Europe, in, in, some, in the civilized Europe, I mentioned some countries, um, it, it cannot happen, it won't happen. In Switzerland, if you follow the, the Switzerland uh, kind of uh, politics, uh, it will not happen in those kind of places. Yeah, but in Africa, uh -huh. I tell or Southeast Asia, this will resonate plenty, plenty now, because you can't point finger at anybody again, say, okay, uh, we're wanting you to to do this properly. No. They are going to trust like countries like Nigeria, they are going to tell you to keep quiet. You have not gotten your own. Why are you talking about our, our, our rigging here? That's and it. It's going to happen here now. In fact, with pomposity, it's going to happen. Yeah. Rigging? I mean, it's not established yet that rigging took place in the United States. Well, there are some places that has been mentioned, if you have followed them, or even if he wins or Donald Trump, there are some malpractices that were done here and there. And our people are watching now. Our politicians are watching. Uh, the, our political elites, they know how they got in there. A lot of them forced themselves, forced their way, rigged themselves to the position they are. Now, that's why they cannot really make any good change for the country. So they are going to take this now as a very good example uh, America rigged, but what's going to happen if we do that here? Yeah, that's my fear. Mm. That is really my fear. Everybody in the world knows something has happened. And that's why some presidents have not come out. Even their closest neighbor uh, was, I'm not a fan of uh, Trump. They are closest Mexico, mm. uh, even the Chinese that mm. uh, Donald Trump is trying to block mm. off. Mm. They say we're not going to con uh, congratulate until we see the end of this thing. But already a very big damage has been done to the American democracy. Whether he, Biden enters or Trump win or whatever, the world, but it's not a shining example for developing okay. democracies in Africa. Now, uh, there's a lot of politics involved and given the economic uh, placing of, uh, of the United States, that is also an issue. Um, the, all the key questions of civil liberty and all that, but also playing out is the consequence for global security and stability. Mm. You are into international uh, security. security and uh, especially counterterrorism and in intelligence uh, efforts. Mm. How do you see this impinging on that very vital element in human existence? Yeah, w uh, like I said, whoever wins, uh, it's not going to stop Americans' uh, security 
architecture, security apparatus, because one of the most important things for America is, number one, its citizens, protection of life and property mm -hmm. of its citizens. Mm -hmm. You see what happened recently, they came into Nigeria to pick just one person, one person who is just uh, a pastor or reverend uh, who came uh, to one of the villages in Niger mm -hmm. uh, to come and do some evangelical work. So it's not going to, but the truth of the matter is, how will the other powers around the world see America? You know, how will this uh, affect global again, because if America is not at peace, does not get it right inside, they won't be able, all those kind of dictates they make, like, oh, Syria, don't do this, if you do this, we're going to come after you. Mm -hmm. um, the Iran case is on the table, has been on the table for a long time now. Uh, even though uh, Trump has chose not to invade Iran, mm -hmm. we don't know what might come uh, with the next government, but above all things, you must see the way America plays, places, is, uh, places, poli or places politics mm -hmm. is that whether Biden or Clinton or whatever, it is American interest. What is their interest in there? Throughout the time, Robert Mugabe was having a field day in Africa, the late Mo Robert Mugabe. Mm -hmm. America did not think of any invasion or removing the man. Why? There's nothing of interest in Zimbabwe. So, what will happen is any, as at any point in time when America's interest is crossed, whosoever leader that they have or president must take a decisive action. It's just about the house. It's because, number one, it's not himself. He doesn't represent his own self or his own thinking, but the collective thought of his party and the American state. That is the first thing that that is important to the Ameri any American Do, do you think government. this is still holding sway, so to speak, in the context of uh, uh, the Donald Trump perspective, that the election was not, didn't go right, uh, and Biden saying that uh, the outcome and the tantrum, so to speak, quote unquote, being thrown by Trump is an embarrassment to the American people, the American state. One of the... Uh, situations we're seeing now coming out is uh, a, a kind of uh, acting on rave. The American president, uh, incumbent president that is, not the president-elect, mm -hmm. uh, sacking his defense uh, secretary, uh, removing the head of Pentagon, and also sending some White House aides to uh, the, the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. How does that really overall capture the American interest? Well, as, as I said, it still boils down to the American. Though it might be something peculiar to Donald Trump himself and his ways of doing things and all that, but uh, above it all, the American interest is still the most important thing. No matter what decision he takes, he's still the American. You know, he comes out. Let me tell you one thing. One thing I, I said before Donald Trump was elected, and uh, uh, people said he won't be there. He was making so many sarcastic statements around. But I remember I met this old American man back in Scotland then, so it is something years over. He said, look, what Trump is saying is what so many white Americans are saying inside their room, and they will not say outside. So one of the things you must realize is that the American interest is foremost. Whether it's be, you remember during Obama's time, and all that, there were a lot of issues about this same police problem and uh, killing black, black youths and all that. As I mean, and Obama is supposed to have a relationship with the black uh, society, or, uh, but what did he, he still stuck to the issue of the American, the American interest. Are you going to come and now dismiss all the white policemen and all that because they killed one or two? And he, at some point, it became realistic that most of our black youths and black families on drugs and all that, out of work, not responsible to their wives and children at home and all that. So it's about the American interest. So whatever he says and all that, uh, Biden, when he comes in, will first of all ask to weigh what is in there for the American, the protection, whether it's the economy 
whether it be the security, whether it be whatever it is, it is about what protects America first. You know, we have that same thing in our constitution, but it is not being mm -hmm. adhered to that the protection of lives and property of the Nigerian person. Tell me how much of your life has been is being protected. So that's the real issue here. Um, with the hot issues, hot air, so to speak, uh, <laughs> making the rounds in, in, in the wake of the election, from, from the point leading to the election, and now the results, final uh, results, uh, still being awaited, long overdue, as it, as it were. Could this, and then the position of Biden and his supporters, could this snowball into bigger security issues yeah, domestically I, yeah, yeah. for America uh, and maybe the rest of the world? That's the view of so many pundits and security pundits around the world. What we are seeing is that we hope that America does not go ahead to have a kind of civil strife in America with this, the development that we are seeing. We just hope that uh, reason will prevail at some point. Uh, but they still have the fathers, American fathers. The Mikata is still out there. Um, we do not find very audible anymore. And some of them, some mm. of the real... Uh, so you're talking about Jimmy Carter, right? Um, yes, I'm talking because when things go is going on like this, America assembles its old mm. uh, leaders to come and you know, proffer solution. So we are looking at it that they should not allow this thing to degenerate into a strife that and because there is strife in America, I tell you, it's going to affect the whole world. Um, in the event that it happens, yeah. what are the options for the world? Not just, we're not just looking, because America has been a power center, a military center in the world. In the event such happens, how should the world be prepared for it? We should just pray that it doesn't happen. Because there is a country <laughs> that has how many nuclear warheads in its hand. And if paradventure in this whole nonsense something happens, I don't know what will happen to mankind. But let's pray it doesn't happen. Because if it does happen, there will be an aftermath of so many things that will happen around the world. Include, we already have serious challenges here and there. So if we do not take time, if we do not take care, they do not take care. But uh, we should be preparing ourselves for any eventuality, except for my own country, which I feel so disturbed about. You know, we are not preparing for anything. On the, because right now we can see, even in the Boko Haram uh, challenge that we have, people say, oh, don't worry, it's happening in the Northeast. We are here in Abuja or in Lagos. It's not. So the same thing, the same mindset is happening over there in the United States. What are the consequences that may the fallouts that may befall us here? What are we thinking ahead? We are always bringing God into everything. God forbid. Well, let's see what God forbid. But the country is so very powerful. They have thousands of nuclear warheads in their hand. If one mischief maker, in the course of all these years, some of the the buttons to those things are in the hand of the president. But some people have access to those places and know what may, they can do and those kind of things. Some crazy far-right group uh, or populist group or, or a jihadi group who has been plotting something in America there can have access into that place. And that's the world gone for us. So we must really be very, very careful. Okay, well, we're looking at uh, some of the issues uh, emerging from um, the U.S. elections, um, while things hopefully are stabilized, uh, we'll continue to follow those uh, issues. We've, I've had in the studio with me Dr. Amechi Wokolo, who is an international uh, security consultant, also into uh, counterintelligence and uh, counterterrorism uh, in, in terms of strategies. Thank you very much for being with us. We will we'll continue this discussion right after this break and hopefully we'll be joined by uh, Ben Epeyong, who is based in this is Liberty this moment in the United States.
This is Liberty Democracy in Practice. You're welcome back. Democracy in Practice reaching you from at the stable of uh, Liberty TV driving from Abuja. The issue in focus is the U.S. election and its aftermath. Where really do everything that have happened place the U.S. in the scheme of things within the global space, given the hyperbolized posture of that country, which has always uh, profiled itself as the epicenter of democracy, civil liberty, military, and economic power. More pointedly, I'm bringing it home, what lessons can Nigeria draw from the U.S. poll since both nations share a lot of similarities. Both are multi-ethnic rainbow nations with similar constitutional democratic practices. Both share a profile of continental influence. Not only are both nations heavily populated, but also pose a basket of familiar challenges of economic frustration, civil abuses, divisive politics among the federated One or, or confederating uh, nations. Now, these are the issues. I will, we still have uh, a counter uh, the, the terrorism expert in, 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 in the studio who is also an international uh, security expert. He's also into uh, counterintelligence activities, Dr. Uh, Amichi Wokono. I still like to welcome you. Thank and you so much. we'll be taking, we're heading off to US now to get uh, a brief take of Ben, who is right in the thick of what's going on in the United States, and then engage some of the issues uh, subsequently. Well, we're having difficulty connecting with. Uh, uh, ben at this moment, uh, maybe a uh, doctor, yeah. we say lo lessons to learn, not only Nigeria, the rest of Africa. Yeah. Uh, what do you see as the options? Well, I, it worries me in the sense that when everything was going on smoothly and the democratic, uh, democratic practice and election um, were going on very well in America, we did not learn anything in Africa. So I don't know that is it now that we are going to name any country in Africa that you can say is free. We have free and fair election, free de democratic parties, freedom of uh, relatively Nigeria used to be one of the. Sorry, I, I, I will, I'll take your contribution here. Um, uh, ben, where uh, I hope where you, you can hear us. Hello. Hello? Hello? Well, Ben is reaching us from the United States. He's based there. He's in the thick of what's going on in the U.S. at the moment. Please bring, yes, bring us up to speed as to what is going on 
right now. Uh, we, we just take some brief moments. Ben is a broadcast analyst uh, uh, based in, uh, in the United States. So welcome to Liberty TV, Ben. Yes, good day. Yes, Thank you. bring us up to speed, please. Hello? Yes, Sunday, I can hear you. Yes, uh, what's, what's the situation right this moment in the United States? Well, the situation is, the situation is that of, uh, on one side, a surprise, and on the other side, uh, that's uh, fear, fear for the national security of the United States, because something like this has never happened in this country before. Credit has been exhausted. Yes, there are issues of fear. Yeah, yeah. Fear for the security There's of that, that country. Yes. You are the security expert. Yeah. Is I, it is it palpable to the point that we should be concerned? Yeah, it's it's a very, a very serious thing. That's why I said w w there's fear even amongst the Americans that they are, uh, we should not go into a serious strife into America in America. A serious my little the civil war the second time but this time uh, between the le very left and the far right in America so we don't know what my but maybe uh, America will re-engineer itself because should America snowball into anything it's going to devastate the rest of the world and again some unscrupulous regime in Africa will take advantage of that that okay if these guys cannot we are going to now vent authoritarianism over the people that we should pretend over. You don't think that African nations have outgrown that possibility? No, they have not. Look at what happened in Mali. Look at what happened in Sudan. Look at they will not grow. <laughs> Even uh, America, uh, Cameroon is supposedly to have a democratic government. Of how many decades now has that person and still venting? very serious despotic uh, regime reign over its people. So what are we talking about here? So I don't think we are, until something calamitous happens, uh, which will be, that might have its adverse effect on us. Uh, but okay, please, it's, uh, Ben is back. Okay, we, we, are, we had a little uh, technical hitch. So um, please uh, continue where you started. Thousand votes, yes, or, or, okay. or are you talking yes, about the? Two hundred and ninety electoral votes. Okay, the electoral and, uh, votes. Seventy-seven million twenty-five thousand five hundred and fifty-six votes as of today. Okay. Whereas Mr. Trump has seventy-one million nine hundred and fifty-five thousand and ninety votes. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Biden, the former vice president, has beaten Trump. So, so, six million. So why is why is Tom um, uh, Trump still digging in the way he is going about it? And what's the feeling of, of the American people? Well, the uh, American people stand up on the street uh, the day uh, the president elect was announced. However, don't forget that more than half of those who voted that. Uh, 77 million, 71 of the 77 million, 77 million for Biden and 71 for both. There are 71 million individuals who thought that Trump has done a good job. Okay. So on their, on their own side, they have been convinced to start 
all all so of both parties that is yes that has been counted so i mean uh, what since we we've been hearing the reports filtering out from the united states there hasn't been a shred of evidence about any malfeasance or any unwholesome activity that went on during and after the elections. So what is the basis of uh, Trump's position and how is Biden responding to it or reacting to it? Um, um, please let me get that again. The president elect appointed them or the yes. or the or, or the incumbent president. So do you see them wanting to, to 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 pay back for that for those appointments? So why should I have a, a, an expert here in the studio to to also take on some of those issues? Why should a Supreme Court judge want to pay back for appointments at critical moments uh, like it, this? It is, it, it is not. Let me correct that. It is not that they are going to pay back. But probably every time he gets the microphone, he says he this will be started out in the Supreme Court. So he is hoping, he is hoping and praying that maybe because he appointed those people, um, they will help uh, overcome this case when it comes to the Supreme Court. Okay, um, Ben, let me ask you, what's been the reaction yeah. on ground there uh, about the sacking of the Defense Secretary, uh, the Pentagon Chief, the fifth to be appointed within four years of Trump, and then the placement of some people within uh, from the um, among the aides of Trump where in, in Pentagon. Uh, when you s after speaking, I would like to get uh, the the interpretation of the security expert that I have in the studio with me, uh, Dr. Umwokolo. Please. Hello. Hello. Well, I think we've lost uh, Ben Epayon there. Uh, uh, broadcast journalist feeling, is, feeling us in on the situation at this moment uh, in, in the U.S. Uh, with respect to the election that just went on and the issues that have followed it uh, thereafter. You heard what Ben uh, gave us. Mm. What's your response? to What does it mean? Yeah, if you talk about the Supreme Court judges, that uh, is, is a commonplace around the world. You see, even in Nigeria, uh, I, though I don't like discussing politics <laughs> because it's a messy thing, but people, presidents and nations in America, they deliberately plant their, appoint the, somebody that are sympathetic to their party or to them in case something like this happens. happens. Uh, there's no way some of those people have some leanings and sympathy towards the parties, uh, uh, the ruling party, 
Are you getting me? And they will one time or the other. Ben, just hold it there. Well, I'm getting a response to some of the things that you said uh, from uh, Dr. Nwokolo in the studio with us. So they will want, one way or the other, want to see if that these persons, the judges, are going to make decisions that will favor them. Uh, because as it's, uh, you know, uh, it's not always the case because their own, uh, is, their own system is not like that and the mindset of individuals, they are not like ours, but there's every probability for that to be. And then secondly, the issue of uh, placing people in the Pentagon. Um, people play uh, political chess in case of any eventuality, okay. who is there watching at you? But, but isn't okay. it too late in the day to do anything? Five, six weeks to uh, January 3rd or 4th? Can I tell you something? I'll draw you back home here. So <laughs> ben, please uh, five stick months with us. Or four months before Jonathan left, and he felt that Abba, the police chief, had done him so much, you know, and he felt he needed somebody to show off his living. He mm. brought in Arase. Okay. So you remember that? You <laughs> I remember. do, I do. So let me, let it, it happens. It, it well. happens. Okay, Ben, um, what can we expect moving forward? Well, what we can expect is that um, so far the Trump administration has refused to input Byron and uh, the vice president elect, the president elect, um, any corporation, no money, no resources, no offices, and the so uh, you, you're saying that the transition process is stunted? Well, it, it, will, it will seem that uh, Biden is bearing a big burden under the circumstance. The transition process is being stunted. So, what are we expecting uh, come January? It's just a uh, few weeks away. So Five, so six? Far.
Um, uh, yes. Please let me get let me get the take of uh, Dr. Wokolo is on on this. As a security expert, do you think the Biden stance is going to put some assuage nerves or uh, calm down nerves the way Biden is going about it? Will it help secure both America and its its sphere of influence? Well, it's good the way because he's not responding the way. Um, current president is reacting, uh, it's very, very good because uh, you can have two fools at a time. Uh, you create serious rancor. Um, so it's good what uh, the step is taking. Probably, like he said, um, Donald Trump is somebody you cannot actually predict. He can tomorrow wake up, look, I'm tired of all this thing, here I go. Let's just go to Barbados and relax ourselves. <laughs> so let's hope that moment comes into him. But whichever way the car jumps now, they've actually damaged America's image in terms of democratic tenets. What are you going to tell me when you people are busy making a fool of yourself and all that? It's going to go for a very long time. Uh, represent or portray the image of what America looks like to the world, especially here in Africa. I'm worried about Africa. Can you tell me? Even the Rwanda that were praising mm. the other time, mm. I saw what happened between uh, the pre current president and the, that chap who acted That's the it. movie. That's it. And the, because he challenged the president in some certain place internationally, he came back home and he was given a robe of uh, uh, a terrorist and all That's that. That's it. And That's if you are very democratic, you should be open to criticism. So where in Africa now can we be looking up to? Except for those small, small countries in, within Southern Africa, what is the name? Um, Bos Boswana, Lesetho. Lesetho yes. and all that. Maybe those ones where the king is still holding his <laughs> and his, and, uh, You understand? But those that call themselves, see what happened in Tanzania recently. The man that we're all giving kudos to. Look at how the election and they want to perpetuate themselves forever and change the goal okay. and all that. So well, that's my fear. Ben, um, fear. I think we, 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 we appreciate all the, the imputes and uh, bringing us up, up to speed in terms of what's going on in the United States. Just opposing the situation in the U.S. and Africa, or perhaps let's come down home, Nigeria, what lessons can we draw from what's going on? Ben. You've been in here and you're out there now. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, what I can say is that uh, Western countries, especially uh, countries in Europe, have been sending congratulatory messages. Uh, Germany, France, uh, Britain, uh, have even the uh, countries that uh, you would have thought were not in terms of this. Canada has okay. also uh, sent congratulatory messages. President elect Biden. So far, I am not aware uh, that the State Department has uh, released any uh, name of a country in Africa that has sent a message okay. to uh, uh, okay. President elect Biden. But it is better to err on the side of caution and uh, let the uh, United States put its house in order mm. before the uh, African nations uh, start to uh, align. Okay. Yeah. Well, moving from now forward, we know where President Trump puts Africa on his mind, how he referred to all of us uh, in that continent. But then it is uh, politics and diplomacy. Okay. And I think that when things are settled, we will get to hear more from uh, African nations, especially uh, Nigeria is highly regarded. Okay. Well, and thank the, you uh, very much. Nigerian Thank you very much, uh, Ben Ekpeyong. Um, you are right in the thick of what's going on in the United States, and thank you very much for bringing us up to speed. Ben Ekpeyong.
um, is uh, a grounded international broadcast journalist currently driving his pen profession from the United States. He's been involved at several levels with the NBC, with the BBC, uh, and also back home here in Nigeria with several uh, platforms. Once again, thank you very much, Ben. We hope we can reach you again to give us the update as to what's going on in the U.S. But when, um, I'm very concerned also that uh, the Americans are just doing what here in Nigeria we refer to as sit down, look. They're just watching and waiting for brain waves, so to speak, of uh, Trump to neutralize the heated uh, situation in the U.S. at the moment. Uh, all the same, thank you very much, uh, Ben Epeyo, uh, broadcast journalist and international journalist. We appreciate your coming through on Liberty TV. Thank you for this. Have a fine day. And you too. Yeah. Well, what's your getaway message here, given all that has happened well, and is still happening? For me, is that what's next for my own country, Nigeria? The election has not, we have not even reached 2021, talk less of 2023. Mm. But Things are hotting up already, and yet, according to them, I, I hate to hear and use that word, democratic dividend. <laughs> we have yet to see uh, infrastructures, mm. uh, you know, put in place. We are yet to see people lifted out of hunger and deprivation and poverty. Mm. We are yet to see so many things, okay. uh, but we are. We are already talking about the election. So that's anyway. my worry that can we learn from what has gone wrong there? Can we do it better? You understand? Can we do it better? America is having complaints about electronic voting and all that. And we, we are trying to uh, bring it and do in it. and use it. I just pray. We have not been able to do that, the, the, the real life voting properly, count it properly. But I'm, wor I'm seriously worried about my own nation, much more than America, because when shall we get it right? Well, um, we should remain optimistic that we will one day, at some point, get it right, and not too far from today, um, get it right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Amichi Mwokulu, uh, for you. sharing your thoughts with us on this program. And also to thank Ben Epeyon from reach for reaching us all the way from the United States to keep us up to speed with what is going on there. That's democracy in practice. My name is Mahmoud Tunde Hassan, inviting you to be with us again when we return with another issue. Thank you very much. This is Liberty Democracy in Practice.